that does not mean that I believe that feminists, even if that is true, have behaved appropriately, have behaved in a way that will actually earn women respect, is which I think is one of the ultimate social goals of feminism, um, being able to garner the same amount of respect that men have for doing the same thing. But we're we're not doing the same thing. When you talk about little things like that, things that are like, come on, come on, really? That's what you're complaining about in society? Mansplain, like all these little things that I think only contribute to a disdain toward, toward feminists. And for some people, some people think of all women as feminists. So overall, the disdain towards women. And this, and this is goes back to what I mean by being pragmatic. Now, it wasn't very pragmatic of me just there to mention that little philosophical bit uh, that that men are often seen as as the default. There's a different way to look at that. I want to I want to be fair. How some men might actually see that as as an advantage for women because it means that women are special. That that uh, men oh oh that's so common. But women oh everyone gets excited about women. So that shows that there's a there's a better attitude towards women in society. So I want to be fair and present that viewpoint as well. I disagree, though, because then arguing that that means that men are put more at a disadvantage than, than women because of that dichotomy that's set up, well, that's not very fair to men. I don't want a society where women are seen as better or more special and men are seen as, ugh, that's not what I want. I want basic equality. So just mentioning that isn't very pragmatic because automatically it makes people go, ugh, ugh, really? Really? With all the messed up things going on in the world, you're talking about that issue? And I would agree. And that's why I think feminists have spent too much time talking about philosophy instead of talking about real tangible issues. I, I think that's really where people have lost us, where people, people go, seriously? Seriously? And this is why feminists can't be respected. In, in the modern day, they, some are. Some are definitely deserving of, of respect. Uh, Ayan Hirsi Ali, for example. Whenever I challenged a feminist, their response is, it seems to be that we can't let misogynists dictate how we present ourselves. We can't let them control our reaction. When our reaction, we deserve to be able to react in whatever way we want, and we can't let ourselves be controlled. We can't appeal to the lowest common denominator. Fine, I, I get your point. I get I get what you're saying. You don't want to kowtow because people aren't willing to go far enough. However, I think when you're asking for someone to to move a little, to, to be willing to see something from your perspective, you in that conversation also have to be willing to be moved a little. You may go back to your extreme after the conversation. He may go back to his extreme. But, but for the sake of the conversation, I think you have to be willing to let yourself be moved and to allow yourself to see things from their perspective a bit. And hopefully you can, and, and, if, and if what they say is, is valid, hopefully you can incorporate it into your own thoughts and use it and, uh, and make it your own. Because that's what being part of this a community is being part of a society is we take each other's pe other people's perspectives and we incorporate that into our own perspectives sort of going along the same lines of being pragmatic actually wanting to achieve something um and, and gain something for that that would benefit humanity uh i guess more specifically women but but overall humanity yeah i didn't want to be seen as a bitch because I know that's a common thing people, that's a common way that people view feminists. And I didn't want to be one of those because first of all, I want, I think many people and uh, I think many people want to be good people. I think, I think it's a good thing to want to be a good person. Not to the point where you, uh, you're, you don't allow your mind to be open because you've already decided what it means to be a good person. But, but I didn't want to be seen as a bitch. However, there were other feminists who didn't care because they were saying, oh, that, that's a good thing because that means that, that you're challenging the patriarchy. And, and I didn't like that either. You know, I've, I've always been careful about the word patriarchy because, because I've known, I know the attitude towards it and it's a very triggering word. And um, I didn't want to align myself with sorts of feminists who use that term because 
because it sort of sounds conspiratorial, if you, if you think about it, um, that men are purposely putting women at a disadvantage. I don't believe that. I, I didn't believe that. So I'd always try to be careful in the way I phrased things. And one of the things that I always tried to do that I thought was something that, that that's honorable, that's respectful, but I would always try to watch the opposing opinion. Now, sometimes I encountered genuine misogynists who weren't making any sense. And, um, and that, but, but many people supported them just because they were anti-feminist. I think that people have to be careful just because you don't like feminism as a whole, please don't go to these genuine misogynists and, and, and think more highly of them just because they're opposing feminists because some of them are really just ugh. Like, uh, for example, uh, Menemis, now I know it started as a joke initially, but how, however, there are people who actually think it's a thing, that menemism is a thing and that men are more oppressed in society and have always been more oppressed in society. That's stupid. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, I know I, there are legitimate grievances for men and women across the board in any society, in any decade, in any time, period of time. But to say that, to, to also then do what feminists that I don't like that they're doing is trying to claim this entitlement, this entitled victimhood status. I think you're basically just doing what these radical feminists have been doing. And so that's why I can't respect you either, even though you are making sometimes valid critiques of of feminism, um, you then turn around and, and like to play victim, and I can't respect that. Uh, this is this sort of goes along into the, to intersectional feminism, which I will get into. Uh, sorry, I've been ranting for a while. I started. I was watching Sargon of Akkad. I watched Mr. Repsian because I know he he's a critic of feminism a lot, although he acknowledges not. He acknowledges not all. Basically, when I heard some of the criticisms of feminism, they they didn't say not all. So, so it felt like um, an attack against me. So it was more like I was defending myself, but it, but it came across as I was defending feminists when there were, there were certain people, and I didn't try to defend uh, really bad actors. However, it came across that I was, it's basically what people do with Islam these days, um, where they say, not all, not all, look at what these people are doing, and look at me, look at me, I don't do this, huh? But you have to acknowledge the bad actors. You you have to acknowledge them and denounce them. Uh, I, I, I'll I get later into Anita Sarkeesian. What really bothered me was that they sounded really smart. Mr. Epstein, there were there, there, there were things I can I could genuinely argue at the time and things that I could still genuinely argue. Um and I don't I'm not gonna get into specifics. I actually really like Mr. Epstein. I, I even made a video uh, to him back when YouTube was, could do, like, these video responses. Um, I, I don't think he ever saw it, but it, but it was basically, I know feminist, it was, like, an apology video for feminists. I was like, I know there are really bad feminists out there, but, but, but I, I just want, I, I agree with a lot of what you say about we shouldn't blame the victim, how we should be understanding of people, that, that we shouldn't do, we shouldn't shame people for the way they look. So, so I really hope that you know, not at all, please, please, not me, I agree with you, I like you, please don't hate feminism. And uh, so, so that was one video I did, and um, I, my mom wanted me to take it down. Not because she actually saw the video, she just didn't want me on YouTube, but now I'm 18, so haha. I watched Sargon of Akkad. He was very, uh, I, I like him now. Don't get me wrong, he, he doesn't like feminists, and I'm a feminist, but I really like him now. One of the things I will say about the feminist movement, it was sort of like this thing where if someone doesn't call themselves a feminist, you have to dismiss them. Very, very much like a religion, when you, when you think about it. Not all religions, but, but it's religions that are very tribalistic. Um, they're an outsider. or what they say loses credibility because they do not call themselves feminists. So they may hold opinions that, that, that are in line with the feminist movement. However, because they don't, they're actually hurting feminism because they don't call themselves feminists, but they're still pushing for basic humanistic values. So that's why I didn't probably get more on board with some of these people who are just advocating for basic humanistic values that I also want to advocate for. Uh, in fact, they probably disagree with the use, my use of feminism because 
of what feminism has become despite the definition of feminism, which I think by the very definition of femi feminism, they would also agree that they are uh, feminist. And I actually really, really like Sargon um, uh, as a human being too, from what it, I mean, I don't know him personally, but from what I've gathered, he sounds like a decent fellow. I was angry they sounded more intelligent, more reasonable than my guys. And I really, I started really wanting to be on their side. I really wanted to be with them. I wanted to agree with them. Uh, and I did agree with them on many issues, not all issues, not all. Um, but, but I wanted to, I wanted to be, I wanted them to be on their side. I wanted them to be my guys. And then Anita Sarkeesian came along. And now, please, any of my viewers who are anti-feminist, don't get angry at me. I enjoyed her stuff in the beginning. And what I mean by that was, I was so, I was very into feminism, and she made points that I thought were valid. There was always an authoritarian thing about her, though, that, that, that I didn't agree with, and I thought, but, but it was kind of like, I was thinking, you're making us look bad, not, oh, you're actually just kind of bad. That, that's, that's really what I want to say, that, that. And that, that goes back to watching the dissenting opinions from feminism as well, like Sargon. Um, you're making us look bad. You're choosing the worst among us instead of recognizing, instead of me recognizing, oh, they really just are bad. Uh, and same with Anita. And um, Mr. Repsion helped me actually just really distance myself from her. I watched her stuff, agreed with some of it. I, I, I personally wish that there were more badass female characters in video games. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but that's something I want. I like diversity. I like more choices. Like, I'm such a regress. In all seriousness, there were things that, that genuinely bothered me. For example, there was a game that they wanted to be made. The creator, the, the person who came up with the concept, wrote, wrote the storyline, was basically told you're not allowed to have a female character. Stuff like that bothers me. I believed that there was genuine sexism in gaming. I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's not the biggest issue. That's why I don't make videos, uh, you know, trying to shame people into doing what I believe is right or doing what I believe uh, would be a cool thing, which would be to make more female characters who are not dressed as in sex clothes. Like, is that such a bad thing to say? Can I, can I, am I allowed to say that without being accused of being a regressive, please? In that sense, I agreed with Anita, in that sense. But she became more authoritarian. At that point in my life, I was really, really starting to get into video games. It felt like, oh, this is something I'm interested in, and feminism is the perfect conflation of two things that I like. But Anita, she kept making herself sound bad. She, she really did. It was like secondhand embarrassment, because it's like, Come on, you're on my side. Stop. Stop. Don't you listen to the opposition? Don't you know what they're saying about you? And it bothered me that, you know, she she deactivated her comment section. It bothered me that she deactivated the like section. Now, the like section, I actually, I think there's a valid, a more of a valid reason for deactivating the like section. Not for the sake of popularity, like, you know, oh, I don't like it that people disagree. Like, not for that reason. I think that it's a lazy way to express your opinion. So I could see someone making the argument, I'm going to keep the comments activated, but I'm, go I'm going to deactivate the like section because I don't want people to just come to this video to just dislike it and maybe turn other people away when I want them to actually listen and engage in a conversation. So that part of it, uh, if it was just the like section, I could understand that. But it was also the comment section and then all the I'm a victim stuff. And uh, but then there were clear examples of people being trashed on the other side as well. It really uh, made me hesitate and uh, to, to be def to defend her and I didn't. Although I did defend some of her opinions that I also so happen to agree with.